She's an XOAP, she's an established producer, and of course, she's a CEO of Bookings Africa. We have Fadi Ogunro in the studio with us today. How are you doing? I'm good, ladies. You look stunning you in look red. So stunning. You look lady in red. <laughs> love it, love it, love it. Thank Thanks. you so much for joining us on the show today. I have learned so much, by the way, from watching you guys all morning. Oh. <laughs> I should watch the show a lot more. It's so informative. So oh, well thank done. you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Okay, so you before let's start with your journey before you decided to become a movie producer and a content creator. Your life was the life of an on-air personality. Lead us through your journey in the entertainment hmm. industry. Okay, so if you really want to know where it really started from, I have to actually give credit to my parents because my mom was a journalist slash fashion designer. My dad owned an advertising agency. Um, so I've literally always grown up behind the media, behind the camera. I've been on set since I was three years old. My dad shooting in commercials, whether it's for politics or whether it's for, well, lots of top multinational brands that have come into Nigeria. I'm sure if I just do this clap, <laughs> you know, <laughs> my dad came up with that jingle. Oh, really? Oh, wow. Exactly, exactly. That clapping, he came up with all that. So in terms of being creative and in terms of being known in the media industry and just also just having a good network, I'd always credit them. Um, then I moved to Nigeria and uh, London when I was about seven. Um, studied journalism, came back. I worked for Google briefly, came back to Nigeria and I was just like, I'm going to spend a year here and just kind of faff about. That's really what I wanted to do. And I was like, all else fails, I'll move back to London and continue my nine to five job. And then I just found that I just made lots of great connections. I started working at PM newspaper as a freelance journalist. Then I worked in Radio Continental for about six months. And then Beat FM snatched me up and I worked there for five years. In 2011, I started that, doing that Saturday, Sunday as an OAP. But Monday through to Friday, I was running a production company called Film Factory. So my brother is a prolific director called Chesson. So all the music videos that you've seen, The Band, Wizkid, Dr. Sid, Rande Cole, David O, Tiwa, everybody. So we shot a lot of their videos. So he directs and I produce and together we own Film Factory. That is so, amazing. Thank you. So I was doing that Monday through to Friday from 2011, because I moved back to Nigeria in 2010. Opened up Film Factory in 2011, did that Monday through to Friday, and I was doing radio as well Saturday, Sunday. And I did that for five years, and I just realized I don't have a life. Like, social media makes you look really popular. Like, yeah, I'm popping. My outfits are fleeking. <laughs> but at the end of it, I was so exhausted. And then I started, I got into this weird shift as soon as I hit 30. Oh, my age. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it's fine. As soon as I hit 30, I just kind of started, um, I wanted a little bit more purpose out of life. And I thought, I, it's great. I love my job on radio. But um, is this all that I can do? Is this all that I ever wanted to do? And I thought, no, um, I actually have a lot more plans that of, of how I want to impact media. And um, I wouldn't be able to do all that in the confinement of a radio um, station. And in 2015 slash 2016, I left radio to focus on Film Factory solely and expanded the business. And we focus on a lot of corporate jobs now. So I actually specialize in TV commercials, documentaries, a lot of online promos as well. And then um, I then decided because of the issues that I was facing as a producer, because I wanted to grow the company and become the biggest, everybody wants to be the best at what they do, yeah. right? Um, and then when you start realizing just naturally the infrastructure, the way businesses are run in Nigeria, everything is, um, it's quite hard to, to, mon to manage your time and also time is money. For example, if I want to find um, a, a, a dancer, but you want her to be six foot with ginger hair and a gap in her tooth, but she has to be in Nigeria. You want her to speak Igbo. Where the heck will I go to find that? Where do you go to find such a model? Do you call up the model agencies? Then I decided, do you know what? I need to find a solution to this. I can't just spend three months trying to find one model for a brief. It's just, it's just inefficient and you know, it's expensive. And that's how the idea of Bookings Africa came about. I was like, I need to be able to find a way to be able to get freelancers to upload their own profile so people like myself, a client, can literally just go and find them. So I call it like, Bookings Africa is like the Airbnb for creatives. 
So if you're a model, a voiceover artist, a photographer, an editor, a designer, a hairstylist, a clothing stylist, a makeup artist, because I have lots of friends that come over, especially during Christmas, yeah. and oh, I'm going for a wedding, I've got this event, I've got that. Oh, d can you DM me somebody's number or tag me on Instagram or, or how much do they charge? And you just spend so much time trying to find information that everywhere else in the world is available at the touch of a fingertip online. And I thought, right, no more complaining, I've got to create this platform. So now I've kind of ventured into tech and I have no clue about tech, <laughs> but I'm all about finding solutions. And if that means taking me into the tech world, so be it. Well, one thing's for sure, it's that your strategy is absolutely golden. Thank now, you, you mentioned that Chesson is your brother and you both work together. Did you work with him on the Canna video? Um, no, actually, I don't do hmm. music. Okay, so I'm not saying I don't do music videos anymore, but um, when we first started, everybody had to do everything, you know, and you're a team of two or three. Luckily, as the team has expanded, we have producers that solely handle yeah. music videos. So I'm never on set for music videos, unless it's like my friend, perhaps mm. um, Tiwa or, I mean, Kapi. I was on set for Kapi's video, I produced that. Um, but majority of the music videos, and they're always shot around the world, I really just don't have the time. Um, so no, I wasn't on set for Can I Didn't Produce That, but my production company did. Okay. And how is it really working with your brother? Usually there, there are issues <laughs> when it comes to family, you know, a couple working together and yeah. running their business. So what were the challenges you faced and how were you able to handle them? Um, well, it's, it is kind of, the good thing is he doesn't live in Nigeria. <laughs> That's the good thing. <laughs> so he lives in London and he comes to Nigeria maybe like one week out of every month and then he does all the shoots that he wants to do in Nigeria and then he goes around the world again to film. Um, of course, with anything, friends, family, business and um, corporate, relations, you're always going to have some type of disagreement. So even more so because we might have family disagreements and then at, this is outside of work and then nine o'clock in the morning we're in the boardroom together having to pretend like nothing has gone wrong, like I didn't want to kill you last night, <laughs> you know. So you kind of have that but then I find that it also works because what then happens we're forced to communicate. So whatever differences we may have or disagreements, we find that within a matter of hours, something that could have lasted, a disagreement that could have lasted a few days, we have to squash it in a matter of hours because we've got to give a pitch to a client and we have to give a positive energy and we have to be in sync. So um, it's natural to disagree, I believe, but um, generally we have the same vision and the same goal. So we might want to have different strategies to get to that goal, which is where a lot of disagreements um, arise from. But generally we get over it. And you know, parents will always get involved. That's your sister, that's your brother. <laughs> you guys should love each other. We can never Makes sense. Around. It's made the importance of our parents. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I say that, but I feel like I've got my older sister and I've got my younger brother and I'm like, because there's four of us. So Shasna and I are the middle too. And I can't imagine working with my sister daily or my younger brother daily. And I'm like, I don't, but if you're forced to get into a situation, if it works, it works. If um, it works, it works. Yeah, you just have to kind of figure out how to, when you get to know people's personalities, you, it's, I think it's also an emotional intelligence to know how to manage people. Brilliant. Because everybody's different. Brilliant. Let's speak about your latest success from Lagos with Love. Yay! And it's out tomorrow. You had yes. the premiere two days ago. Yes. Tell us all about Lagos with Love from Lagos from with Love. From Lagos with Love. Okay, so um, big, big, big shout out to Tola Odusi, who's the director. Thank you, Tola, for choosing me. Um, oh, <laughs> <laughs> so um, I was in Atlanta last year shooting um, Copy's music video with um, Techno, yeah. Greenlight. And I bumped into Tala Odusi and he's like, oh, because we worked together on the island, the series. I produced about four episodes out of the 13. And we hadn't worked together since. And he's always like, I love the way you produce. You're so um, regimented. And because I'm, I'm a, you know, I think you know, I, I'm a nice girl, generally. <laughs> but on set, I'm different. <laughs> You get like mean face. Ego to the yes, ego. exactly. My Sasha <laughs> Fierce comes out. So yeah, so he admired that and just the way I was able to um, just be very efficient and solution minded in the way I produce. And then he said he's coming up with this movie. He, the budget was limited. And it's so funny because last year I told myself I want to shoot a movie. I do want to get into the Nollywood industry. But when I'm working with such high quality and a, quite a big budget for commercials, I was always a little bit afraid of having to work with a smaller budget and not getting the same quality. But knowing how Tola works, I was like put at ease that, okay, I know that the quality will be great. And he sent me the storyline, he sent me the script, 
And funny enough, Dami, the scriptwriter, was also my colleague on my radio station. Oh, wow. So it was like a massive family reunion. I was like, okay, great. Dami's a scriptwriter who I've worked with. Tola's a director who I've also worked with. I think it's going to be a fun project. And um, came back to Nigeria. This was around August, September. Started planning everything in September. And in October, like literally this time last year, we were filming. Oh, no. No, we were planning it this time last year. And in October, we filmed. And it took about just under two weeks. I got everybody, like, literally working from 6 a.m. till midnight every day. And we got it done in under two weeks. We were gonna meant to do it in three weeks. But um, I was like, no, I'm sure I could strategize, strategically get everybody in the right place at the right time. And it was so much fun meeting all the cast members. The storyline is amazing, by the way. Um, it's us. really funny, um, but it's like really romantic as well. I'm a sucker for love. Me too. Right? I love love. <laughs> I know. So um, I'll give you a secret, actually. Go for it. Why not? Is this it is a personal it. story? Uh, it's a from love from Lagos with love secret. Ooh, okay. let's hear. <laughs> so originally, the name of the movie was penned to be um, from Christmas, uh, Christmas in Lagos. Yes, that's what's the original name, Christmas in Lagos, because we wanted to shoot it in August, September, and actually have the movie out Christmas last year. But because we couldn't get it out in time, film one and the distribution, they had some certain like parameters that we had to and criteria that we had to meet. Um, it got postponed, and because of that, we then decided to also and we had a, like a meeting, and everybody decided to move the change the name to From Lagos with Love. Mm -hmm. So there you go. That's a little. Did it change the secret. script or no, no, no? Okay. We um, we realized that both names actually fit because what we were going to do was um, with the Christmas in Lagos, we were going to show a lot more of the Christmas lights and just have everybody come home for Christmas, and the story takes place then. So um, back to the storyline. It's about a typical Nigerian family. Um, there's about three daughters and a son, and just basically how each of them interact with each other and how everybody has issues and how the family, you, all you have is family really, and family should discuss things and move on with it. So um, you've, always, you've got the, older, um, the eldest daughter, who's played by Funke Kuti, who is Amazing. And that was her, out her debut. debut. Yes, her debut acting. And she, for me, she was literally one of the best actors. She cried. She had her first kiss on set. She everything. It was like, I just, I watched her blossom. It was amazing. Yeah. Um, and I've worked with Funke on a, on a few other things. So it was, she was nervous at first. But then I, you know, you get to just, you get to see when the, you say light camera action, you get to then actually literally see the personality come to life before your eyes and that was mind-blowing i'm so proud of her so she's acts the elder sister who is um having some marital issues then she's got her immediate younger sister who is um the protagonist enado um i think her name in the movie is um gosh i can't remember her name in the movie now um but enado she's the lead actress um she has issues because her boyfriend cheated on her and she's broken up with him and she's 32 and her family like when are you getting married and to top it off to add pressure as us girls know the younger sister who's played by sharon her name is kelly in the in the movie she gets married or she's getting married so all the family are teasing her the middle sister your older sister's married your younger sister's married when are you getting married and then they have the baby brother of the family, who is actually engaged to Samantha, who is played by Damilola Adibita. I feel like every Nigerian young person can connect to this Can trouble. relate, exactly. Particularly females, exactly. because they put a lot of pressure on us. But we don't want you to spill all the juice. It will be out tomorrow. So people no, no, everybody, th this is stuff that's already in the trailer and out there on social okay, so media. So maybe we're going to take a look so. at the trailer oh, then. Oh, yes, please. And get to have a feel of it. Yes. But when is it out? You know, where is it's, it going to be? It's nationwide tomorrow. Um, Friday is Tomorrow, Friday? Yes. yes <laughs> Friday, 31st of August, nationwide, all Film One houses. Make sure you watch it and yeah, tweet at me. Follow as well from Lagos with Love Move, M O V. Brilliant. Fade, thank you so much. To enjoy more of this, our Ugonke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.